Understanding biblical. So we have four types of fathers. I will explain the four types of fathers we have. And in these four types of fathers that I will explain, you must have at least three for you to be in stability. You people will help me with Joanna now. Praise the Lord. Number one type of father is the first father. Abba father. Or heavenly father. That is the first father. The second one is biological father or earthly father. You can call it biological or earthly father. The third one is spiritual fathers. And the fourth one is adopted fathers. Number one is what? Or heavenly father. Number two is biological fathers or you call them earthly fathers. Number four Three is spiritual fathers or mentors. And number four is adopted fathers. You must have at least three out of these four. If your life must be in balance on it. But I'll explain them, then you know why I said you must have at least three. Abba Father or Heavenly Father means daddy. It's an Aramic word that Jesus used when he was praying and we use it as well when we pray. Abba Father. It means our daddy. The first father. The God who reigns over mankind. Who reigns in heaven and on earth. That is Abba Father. Romans 8 verse 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of slavery, leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons, by which we cry Abba Father. By which we cry my father. By which we cry my daddy. The scripture says, this is the spirit we receive, whereby we cry about Father. There is no way you can call on to him as your father if you have not received the spirit. What the Holy Spirit does is to tell you, he is your father. I am not your father, Holy Spirit is telling you. I am not here to play the role of the Godhead. I am God the Spirit. I am here to point you to Godhead by making you know God the Son. Because it's through him, he is the way that you get to God the Head. It's through this spirit that we can call Abba Father. If you don't understand God as your father, as your number one father, then you've not even had the Holy Spirit himself. Because it's, it's his work to explain who the father is to you. Man 14 verse 36 says, and he was saying, Abba Father, all things are possible for you. But hey, Abba Father, that is daddy, God my daddy, God my father. All things are possible to you. Can you open your mouth and say this with me? God, my daddy. God, my daddy. I know all things are possible to you. I know all things are possible. To you. I see God wearing a smile on the faces of many this morning. Amen. On this Father's Day celebration, God will decorate you with smile. Amen. You know what God does? He looks at you and takes brush. And he just, when there is a wrinkle of cry, he says, No, he use brush, pancake, foundation. And makes your face beautiful. God will beautify you this morning. Amen. Because Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Because ye are sons. God calls us sons and daughters. God has sent for the spirit of his son into our hearts. Crying, Abba Father. The spirit is in our hearts. Yielding. Yielding to Godhead. And crying, Abba Father. He's the first father we can ever think of. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Second Corinthians 6, verse 18. I will be a father to you. He is our first father. Psalm 103, verse 13 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion to those who fear him. God will show you compassion today. Amen. God will show you compassion today. Amen. As you go out for your workplace this week, God will show you compassion. That's the first father we have. Do you have him as your father? Yes. You have him as your father? Yes. Number two, biological or earthly father. A biological father is the male parent of a child. He carries your physical DNA. Your father is the man that carries your DNA. 
Your father is the man that carries your DNA. Then someone will ask, what is DNA? DNA means deoxyribonucleic acid. To those of you that studied biology. DNA means deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. What does it mean? It is the hereditary material in humans and almost all the organisms. Nearly every cell in a person's body has the same DNA. Your eye has cells, has tissues, hairs, body. Everything you can think of in your body has this DNA. So when a man meets a woman, that sperm is deposited in a woman, carries that DNA. So that when that sperm is meeting with the woman's egg, as the baby's ear is forming, the ear that the baby's own form picked an information from the father's ear. The eye of the baby picks an information from the father's eye. The baby's color picks an information from the father's color. The baby's leg, every statue of that baby picks an information. That is what DNA means. It means an information from the father entered that of the uh, daughter or the son. It is when the baby now comes out and they say, this baby represents, uh, looks like more of the father looks like. It is when those uh, DNAs, the man's DNA and uh, whatever they call it of the woman's own, they meet together. They battle and battle and battle. If the woman's own subdues, the baby looks more like the mother. If that of the man subdues, then the baby looks more like the father. But there is an information passed from the man's cells, transported into the woman before they form that baby. So a biological father is a man that shares the same DNA with you. Who is a spiritual father? A spiritual father is someone God has placed in our lives for our spiritual well-being. We submit to them. We give our hearts to them. And we serve them and honor them. Your spiritual father is the one who carries your spiritual DNA. I said your biological father is the one who you shares your physical DNA or biological DNA. But your spiritual father is the one who shares your spiritual DNA with you. He is the one who is in custody of your spiritual fire. What is the spiritual DNA? DNA demonstrations nurtured by order. The spiritual DNA, DNA, demonstrations nurtured by the order. D, demonstration. N, nurtured. A, by the order. That is spiritual DNA. What does that mean? You see someone baby say this one prays like a pastor. Pastor has poured himself inside this one. Demonstrations not charged by his pastor's altar. The altar has also laid hands on that person. Is anybody following this now? When you see a child behave, say this one behaves like the father. This one talks like a mother. This one has a father's complexion. Likewise, spiritually, if you have a spiritual father, have you seen the power life pastor speak like Kumui? Have you seen them? Have you seen Papa Oyedepo yield children, birth children that speak like him? When they are teaching, you say, this person sounds like Papa Oyedepo. You have to listen twice to know that he's not Papa Oyedepo. I don't know if somebody follow me now. Have you seen Pastor Chris teaching? And you see many people or many pastors from him sound like him. When you teach to STV, you have to listen and watch and say, ah, this one is not Pastor Chris, but he speaks like him. That is this demonstration not taught by Christ's embassy's order that has poured itself upon those persons. If you claim to have a spiritual father, and you don't carry his spiritual DNA, then that is a lie. You don't have a spiritual father. Real spiritual fathers will always point you to Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 says, For if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through, your, through the gospel. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. The one who nourishes you, preaches to you, speaks to you, talks to you, prays for you, is your spiritual father. How many, how many have I explained now? The fourth one, adopted father. An adopted father is your guide Is your school father. Is your societal father. 
a man who has adopted the child as opposed to a biological father these ones don't share the same dna with you but play the role of a father to you for instance gideon stays with me i am not his biological father i don't share the same dna with him but i am an adopted father to him do you understand what i'm teaching now i am an adopted father to him if you don't have a biological father maybe he's late or he's not with you you can also adopt a father and say this is my adopted father so do you understand what is Abba Father? Yes. You understand what is what is the next one now? Biological, Biological Father? Yes. You understand what is spiritual father? Yes. You understand what is adopted father? That's why I say you must have at least three of these fathers. You must have the Abba Father. You must have the biological. If you have biological father, you don't need adopted father. But if you have adopted father, that means you don't you don't have a biological father. Do you understand me now? If your biological father is not with you, that means you need an adopted father. You can't be poor or somebody must answer for you as a father. And you must have a spiritual father. Don't ask me, Pastor, why? There is a junction of life where you must need one of these fathers to answer to you. You need the upper father every time. You need the spiritual father every time. You need the biological father or the adopted father anytime. God will give you the fathers that you need in the name of Jesus. Subheading one. I'm going to divide this message now into three parts so that you will understand it properly. Subheading one, the manifestation of God through spiritual father figures on earth. How does God manifest to you through the spiritual father figures? Like through your pastor. Now how can God manifest to you through your pastor? Number two, the manifestation of God through biological fathers to their families. How does God use biological fathers to manifest himself to families? Number three. Responsibilities of a worthy child, wife, and members to a god sent spiritual or biological father. Responsibilities of a worthy child, a worthy wife, and a worthy church member to a god sent spiritual or biological father you've known the role of your spiritual father the role of your biological father you also need to know your role because it's not only the fathers that play a role to you not only fathers subheading one the manifestation of God through spiritual fathers how can God manifest himself to you through spiritual father in other words what is an import what is the importance of a spiritual father in my life why do i need the covering of a pastor this church i'm coming every day i'm sitting listening every day what is the soul aim, the importance of the spiritual father as it regards me my my life and my christian journey on earth before we forge ahead know that no man had seen god no man had seen god at any time he uses agents on earth to reveal himself. He uses agents to talk to men. No man has seen God and sometimes he also uses spiritual fathers to relate to his children. No wonder John chapter 1 verse 18 says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. Hebrews 1 1 says, God who at sundry times. Can we read this together? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Let me wait so that they put it on the screen. The book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. One to go. And diverse manners spake in time past unto who? Unto who? Unto who? By prophets. He said he spake in diverse manner. That means today he can use message to speak through fathers. Tomorrow he can use instruction. Tomorrow he can use responsibility. Say this is your responsibility. Do this. Next tomorrow he can use this or use that. God in sundry times. Different times. Different manners. Speak in time past unto fathers by the prophet. Responsibilities. No, not responsibilities. The manifestation of God through spiritual fathers. How does God manifest? Number one, 
Fathers are God's mouthpiece and commanders. God manifests through fathers by using these fathers as his mouthpiece. John 1 verse 18 says, No man, pardon me, Exodus 1 verse 16 says, Moreover, he shall speak for you. This is God talking to Moses that Aaron will speak to the people. He will act as your mouthpiece for you and you will be as God to him. Moses said, I can't speak. God said, carry Aaron. You will be a God to Pharaoh, but Moses will be your mouthpiece. Uh, Aaron will be your mouthpiece. He will speak and interpret everything you pass to Pharaoh. Why did it God open his mouth from heaven and talk? That is not in his office. Beloved, hear me. Men have missed their destinies because of insensitivity to listening in the place of worship. From opening prayer to closing prayer, there is always an instruction every day. From opening prayer to closing prayer, there is always an instruction passed from your pastor to you by God. But it depends on how sensitive you become. He might say, we are doing this this week. He might say, we are doing that. We are going here. We are doing this one. To you, it's just one of those church activities. But God is just passing an information that will transform you. He's passing an information that will change your generation. God will always speak and direct and correct you through spiritual fathers. Jeremiah 2 verse 2 says, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem. God is telling Jer Jeremiah, prophet Jeremiah, saying, Don't say yes, the Lord. I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. God has spoken at four times, two different manners, two different times. Oh God, do this for me. Oh God, do this for me. Every day God is saying it through the pastor. God is saying it through your spiritual father. Hear me. Genesis 18 verse 9 says, For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. That means God has apportioned fathers, spiritual fathers, to command the children, to command the church to become God's mouthpiece. How does God manifest through spiritual fathers? Two, he manifests as he manifests by using fathers as his messengers. Fathers are God's messengers. Deuteronomy 6 verse 6 to 9 says, And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Fathers are God's messengers. God passes messages to them to pass to you. And these messages sometimes come in different topics that you learn every Sunday. He's a messenger. No father proclaims his own accord on his own accord. No pastor teaches on his own accord. Any pastor that desires your spiritual growth always asks for God to speak to him. No pastor, any pastor that just come on the other and say, This topic will be this, that topic will be this. That pastor is not is, is joking with the destinies of the flock. We enter the room of worship and prayer and listen, and we say, This is it, and that is it. Hear me? We are messengers. Spiritual fathers are messengers. So, until you see the messages we pass to you as one that comes from God, you won't also obey it. And until you obey that that comes from a messenger, life will not be shifted. May God grant you the grace to obey his messengers in the name of Jesus. God manifests, number three, God manifests through fathers as battle tools. Spiritual fathers are there to fight for you. Most times when you are sleeping, they are awake at night praying. Most times when you are at your workplace, that is why pastors most times are not advised to go out, go working. Even if they are working, they must have time to cater for the flock. Most times you are at your workplace, your pastor is on the altar here. There is virtually, there are seven days of the week. If I don't come here in a week, I come here close to five times. If I don't spend time here, I spend time close to three hours every time I come here. There is no time I don't only sit here. I pray. I will sit in the office, pray, pray, pray. I will come on the altar, pray, pray, pray. After that, I will study and leave. Hear me? God uses them as your battle tools. At that moment, you are busy, shop place, doing this, doing that. You don't know what your spiritual father is busy telling God. God, this church will not bury any soul. God, this church, nobody will come in to go for burial. God, defend your name in this church. 
God, you say this is a place of solution. God, you say this is a place of answer. Every prayer I have prayed for people, let answer come. Everything I have proclaimed, let answer come. That is your man of God doing that or the other while you are at your workplace. They are your battle tools. Sometimes some things happen miraculously. They say, how did this come about? They are your battle tools. They were somewhere interceding. You are on the way. You want to cross. Something happens. All of a sudden, they have pushed you out of accident. They are your battle tools. They are somewhere interceding. That is, that is any pastor that does not pray for, pray for his flocks, pray for his gadget. Every time he's praying, him, 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 him. God, push me. I want to be relevant. I want the world to hear me. I want the world to know me. That pastor is, well, forgive me, he's just useless. He's useless in that office. Your growth as a man of God is in the growth of the flocks. If a member here packs car here, it adds to my own honor. And it is happening before this year ends. Amen. I decree it is happening before this year ends. Amen. I know it and I say it again. It's happening before this year ends. Amen. If a member here dedicates house, it's to the honor of the pastor. So it's wrong for a pastor to be praying me, 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 me. Let me tell you the truth. I stand before God. I pray for you sometimes more than I pray for myself. Because by the time you are coming with a car, people will look at you and say, this young man that is trekking past here every time, now he drives car. When you even go for evangelism, they say, end time with me now, I have to drive you to car. With AC inside car, smelling good. Will they make a guy to enter with you? Evangelism becomes easy. Every week, anything you could record will never pass 5,000 in your workplace. We never pass 10,000. We never pass 20,000. And now I intercede that God makes it, it passes 100,000 weekly, 50,000 weekly. It's not to the glory of his name. Spiritual fathers manifest as your battle too. This morning, I manifest as your battle too. Anyone resisting your going forward, that person will be subdued this morning. Anyone resisting your business from growing, I disarm them now in the name of Jesus. Anyone standing against your your, 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 your career, the things you've studied, what you have told God I want to become, and someone is resisting it, I decree, this morning I stand as a father, and I decree they are being disarmed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your business will move forward. Amen. I push you with the grace of a father. I say your business move forward. Amen. I push you as the, with the office of a father in PGC. I decree your family move forward. In my office as a father upon this altar, I decree your family move forward. I push you forward. I push your, your work forward. I push your career forward. I push your business forward. No coming back in the name of Jesus. Without the hand of Moses lifted up, Israel would not win the battle. I hope you remember. Exodus 17, 11. And it came to pass when Moses' hand was held up that Israel prevailed. And when his hand was let down, Amalek prevailed. God uses us as battle tools. When Moses lifts his hands up, the Amalekites will be losing in the battle. But when the hand is brought down, they will be losing. When Moses is, and pardon me, when his hand is lifted up, the Amalekites will be losing. But when Moses' hand was coming down, the Amalekites were winning. Which means there was a father figure that was needed for the Amalekites to lose. Today I lift my hands up. Sickness will lose in your life. Lack of sales will lose from your business. Prolonged singlehood loses now in the name of Jesus. I lift my hands up. Lift your own hands up as a support to this prayer. I lift my hands up and I decree as a father in this house, you will not die untimely. Death has lost this grip in your life in the name of Jesus. Number four. God manifests through fathers as blessing dispensers. God uses fathers to disperse blessing. Like as I'm opening my mouth, declaring that. Let me tell you something. Let me calm down. Look at me. Look at me. If someone looked at you and tell you, say, like all this normal, you all this useless language that is in the grace. Nothing happened though. Someone look at you and say you decree. You'll be happy. You will not be happy. You say, what's warranted 
this insult, something like that. Am I making sense? Words are powerful. That word affected your mood. That word changed your mood. That word disfigured you. Almost made you temperamental. That is the power of words. See how that word would have disfigured you. Now, in like manner, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. As I'm speaking and proclaiming blessing, they are entering the realm of your spirit. They are passing through the gate of your spirit, which is your ear. Entering your mind and saturating your whole being. I proclaim again, you are a blessed being. I proclaim again, our children, they are blessed. I proclaim again, your husband is blessed for you who are you is married. Your wife is blessed. Your children are blessed. God also, now, you know Genesis chapter 27 verse 30 and it came to pass. As soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, Isaac blessed Jacob, his father. And Jacob was yet scarce gone out from his presence that Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. You know the story of Esau, Esau and Jacob, who proclaimed the blessing? The father, Isaac, proclaimed. God would have said, this person, come and proclaim blessings. This other person, come and proclaim blessings. Let me tell you something. God prepared your priest, your spiritual father, to be your blessing dispenser. If you are wise, you will not be far from your father. If you are wise, you will know how to draw from your father. If you are wise, you will know how to bro how to push that blessing to come out. Unless you don't know what comes with what we proclaim. Unless you don't know what is happening when we stand on this altar to pray. I am prayed, proclaim, and then testify here. That should also make you know that everyone coming this day will come for your own honor and for your own glory. Number six, God manifests true fathers as Okay, that is number five. God manifests through fathers as cost lifters. He manifests as blessing dispensers and also manifests as cost lifters. When Isaac blessed Jacob, the opposite of blessing should be curses. It should have meant that it is curses that remain for the brother and Esau. But as a father, he also lifted the curse. Many of us will just read without understanding that scripture. He blessed Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob, pardon me. He did not proclaim blessings per se to Esau, but he lifted the curse. Look at what he said to Esau. Genesis chapter 27, verse 40. And by thy sword shall thy live. He was telling Esau. So you, will, you have to walk out there before you survive, or you will live by your sword. I have blessed Jacob, your brother, because he is the one that honored me. Jacob understand my place as a father. He honored me. So I proclaimed a blessing. So he went to the one that honored me. It went to the one that honored me. You came late. I knew you wanted to honor me, but you came late. So you will survive by the sword. You will work hard before you eat. Hmm. You, will, you, will, you will eat. Suffering. You know? And shall serve thy brother. Somebody say, God forbid. And it shall come to pass. When thou shalt have dominion, this is where he lifted the cost. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from thy neck. Your brother will dominate over you. You will serve your brother, but it will come to pass. He's lifting the cost now too. That you will say this thing I'm not doing again. I can't carry this yoke again. You will have dominion over your brother, and this same cost you will lift it from thy neck. When Jacob served his father-in-law, served, served, and went back with his wife and children, he wanted to go and meet his brother Esau. When he saw Esau, he was afraid that Esau would kill him because Esau has been looking for him for long. But when he saw Esau, Esau was so rich. In Kathos, Esau was so rich. But the father didn't tell Esau that you'll be rich. But he lifted the curse. So Esau was so rich. I don't know who said they cost you. I don't know who looked at you and raised in an ugly altar. Beloved, tell me, shall a costless cost stand? No. The book of Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 26 verse 2 verse rather says, As the bed by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse, costless, shall not come. And 
anyone that cost you costlessly, I lift those costs now in the name of Jesus. Anyone that cast your mother costlessly, I decree that cost returns back to them in the name of Jesus. Anyone that looked at your children and cost them, I return the cost back to them in the name of Jesus. I stand at this altar this morning as your spiritual father and I decree every costless cost in your family will not stand. Every costless cost in your academy shall not stand. Every costless cost in your business shall not stand. Every costless cost in your husband's life shall not stand. Every costless cost in your wife's life shall not stand. Every costless cost around all your siblings shall not stand. We manifest as cost lifters. We can't be here and anyone curse you. We can't be standing on this altar and anyone lays curse on you. It can't stand. Number seven, number six. God manifests through fathers as spiritual defense. I've explained this over and over. As spiritual defense. One of my sons called me. I said, Father, pray for me, oh, pray for me. Oh from one of the states in Nigeria. I said, what happened? He said, this is the dream I had. This is the dream I had. Something evil would have happened that era. And I prayed over the phone. He was so happy and calm. He said, now that you have prayed, I am calm. That he believed so much that he had a father in him. And that same week, everything turned around for him. Life turned around for him. And God also used this same young man to do something massive in him. This church, I will announce it to you at the close. You want to hear it now? I should tell you now. I will tell you at the end of the service. This young man single handedly look at something that this church has been looking for since that the price is all, almost close to 200,000 and carried it on his shoulder and cleared it. We'll get to that during an announcement. The place of the spiritual father. Yami, you know I, mean? I don't believe that you know in all the churches. Pastors will tell you this. What I'm saying is that most times that people from far draw more from their anointing than people from close. I don't believe that will work here. As people from far draw, are drawing you to whatever they are doing, you must do it and you must draw to in the name of Jesus. Whatever honor they are placing on the altar, you too must learn to place that honor. And you must draw. Nobody from far will be testifying. Why you will not be testifying? Everyone will be testifying. You too will be testifying. In the name of Jesus. Seven, God manifests through fathers for career and spiritual direction. A father can look at you and say, don't go here. Don't travel. Don't come. Don't do this. Don't do that. You don't know what God has shown in my head. And he will tell you, don't do this. One of my daughter wanted to travel. I said, my daughter, don't travel. I was just jovially saying it. And my daughter traveled. And the messages I was receiving is that he pray for me, I'm dying in the village. But thank God, God brought her back strong. I hear me now. Sometimes it may not be convenient. Instructions may not be convenient. God has seen something ahead. I will tell you, don't go. I have fixed days to do, and God will tell me, don't do it. And I will not do it. Later on, I will say, God, thank you that I was not there. Listen to instructions. See your spiritual father, father enough for you to tell him where you are going to. Don't see him just like, okay, he's pastor, he's preaching to me on the other. See him father enough for you to tell him, I want to do this. I want to go here. I want to go this place. I want to do this one. I have this to do. See him father enough. Don't see him as just your preacher. He's preaching to me, he has preached to me again. Today. See him spiritual father enough for your spiritual direction. Next. God manifests through fathers to provide emotional support. Remember the prodigal son? Despite how bad he wronged his father, the father sighted him from afar. The father ran out and embraced him. Father is father. Despite what you do to father, fathers are father. There is no way you will wrong a spiritual father that that spiritual father should hate you. That means that spiritual father is not father enough. Despite how you wrong them, they are still there as fathers. They are there to give you emotional balance. They are there to support you emotionally, to guide you, so you don't make mistakes. 
Next one. Fathers manifest. God manifests through fathers to bring motivation and correction. Don't grow too big that your spiritual father cannot correct you. When your spiritual father says, Hey, stop this, stop it. Stop it. Hebrews 12 verse 7 says, If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. Anyone that they cannot be chastised, nobody can call that person a son. Anyone that pastor will look at and say, If I correct this one, you will be angry. That one is no longer, you are no longer under that pastor. Pastor looks at you and says, Child, this thing, this, this boy is doing his bad. This thing, this guy is doing his bad. But I can't correct. If I correct, they will be angry. That means that pastor is afraid of you. He's not your father. Can a father be afraid of the child? So if the father has gone to an extent and he's afraid of you, he's not your father. He can't correct you. He can't chasten you. He's not your father. Spiritual fathers are here to manifest for your correction. They are here to manifest to, for your guidance. They are here to manifest for your lifting. And as you obey and listen to them, God will lift you to a place of marvel in the name of Jesus. I say, God will lift you to a place of marvel in the name of Jesus. God manifests through fathers as intercessors. Genesis 18 verse 23. Remember the story of Abraham. Abraham went to Sodom and Gomorrah where his brother was Lord. God said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham did that. God, please don't destroy them yet. What if we see 10 persons? What if we see 50 persons? What if we see 40 persons? God said, go and check. If you see so, so no. What he was doing was interceding. That is the role of spiritual fathers. To pray for you. And Abraham drew near and said, Genesis 18 verse 23, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? You know how many times God looked at the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness? And said, I will kill all these people and kill all of them. Moses, through you, I will raise another people that I will take to the promised land. Yet Moses will kneel down and say, God, please don't kill them. If you kill them, Egypt will hear and say that it is because you could not take them to the promised land. That's why he killed them in the wilderness. Please don't kill them intercessors spiritual fathers are your intercessors and i pray every prayers we have offered for you on this altar god will answer in the name of jesus subheading two what is the first subheading we talk about if i know if you are following me now the manifestation of god only one person is writing the manifestation of god through spiritual fathers number two the manifestation of god through biological fathers to their families how does god manifest to us through our biological parents number one he uses the fathers to demonstrate godly love and shield to the mothers fathers are in all families to become a shield and love for the mothers or for their wives that's the number one rule of every man my role first is to my wife than to my child. That is nothing like my child than my wife. Nothing like that. Tomorrow, my child will get married and leave me. I will be with my wife. Is anybody hearing me now? Tomorrow, this young girl will leave me. She will become someone's sweetheart. So, if I left my own sweetheart, is it not me that will regret at the end? Wife will now say, go and call her back to cook for you. I won't cook again. <laughs> so you people we are making me jealous. I don't know if anybody is catching me. Every husband, hear me. Online or offline, your first responsibility is to your wife before the children. I don't know how hard you want to take this, but take the truth and swallow it. Anyway, the bone hook you will give you water to drink. Your first responsibility, young men that are about to be getting married, your responsibility is first to your wife. Let me make it let me make it clear to you. My child is on exclusive. She can't swallow gare now. She can't eat pap now. She's on exclusive breast milk. If my if I don't provide adequately for my wife where my child eats, somebody answer me. Which means I have to feed wife fine so that wife can feed child well. Do you now understand what I mean? By my responsibility is to the woman. My love is to her. 
The more I love my wife, the more my children will love me. That is the secret. If you even want the heart of your pastor, let me open up to you. Is how you relate to my wife that I can relate to you. You can't tell me you love me more than you love my wife. It does not work. It's the way I see you love her. The way I see you are out there for her. Me too, I will be out there for you. Because you understand this thing. I am being real to you. Not every person will tell you this truth. That is the truth. The man's strength is his wife. Just as the woman's strength is her child. Because now she push her heart. Men, no verse. They have their own strength and their children. But you, they are, they are you. Your own strength is the woman. The woman's strength is her children. Her children, when she looks at them, she's not that she does not respect you, but her strength is in that child. Ephesians 5, 28 to 29. Well, George is quiet now. Men, men, oh yeah. You don't like this part. Men, oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody must hear this part. I like balancing my teaching. Anyway, it's women on our dead women. Anyway, it's man. But even though I'm wrong, I will preach it and correct myself. I will not say because I'm wrong, I will not preach it. I will preach it and then correct myself. Ephesians 5, 28 to 29. In this same 5 verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. The next line. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord loved the church. The way I love myself is the way I should love my wife. As I wake up this morning, I went in front of the mirror, comb my hair, make sure I'm looking good, put in my clothes well, dress fine, and came to church. That is the same way I should also look at my wife. And see that everything is in order. Her life is in order. Her spiritual life is in order. She's my student, too. My wife is my student. Please, I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes she will be my teacher. This season, I told her, this is the things you are doing this season. I gave her 17, how many messages? 27, 17 messages as her pastor and as her husband. That was the day before yesterday. I downloaded 17 messages. I said, babe, this is your assignment. You must listen to these messages from now till one week. That means each day, three messages or four messages. So when she came back yesterday, she told me, I want to tell you something. I said, what do you want to tell me? She said, I love you. Said, My head was shaking. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to open up. I have to use it to teach. <laughs> No, seriously. My wife has not been like that before. No, not like she does not tell me she loves you. She tells me, all of us, we tell each other I love you every day. She tells me I love you, I tell her I love you. Every day, as she's going out, I shall call her on phone and say I love you. But this one came on another dimension. She came back at about 10 to 11. We just finished praying for service. She said, I want to tell you something. I said, tell me. I thought it's a long story. I said, what is it about your family? Is it about me? What did I do? So I just want to tell you that I love you. Do you know where that thing came from? Do you know where it came from? It came from one of the messages I gave her to listen. Because as she's listening, I'm listening. Imagine if every day I'm saying my wife is not romantic. Meanwhile, I was supposed to be a father. To also tell her, to help her, guide her, to teach her. Teach her, show her things that she, ordinarily speaking, she could not see on her own too. As a father, when your children come back, you say, this is your assignment. You did your well, you did not do your well. You now guide them well. You also play that role for them. She's no longer with the dad. If the dad calls, the mom comes, what they will ask is, how is your husband? You cannot ask some intimate things that I have to ask. She too has looked at me and told me, as we are, will be listening to me, I have, she has 17 messages she's listening to in one week. I have 24 messages I'm listening to in the remaining two weeks. As one is playing, she said, this is you. This pastor is talking about this site. You have to call it this. I, won't, I don't take offense. Say, this part is the church. You have to do this in the church. I say, yes, that is the truth. I'm picking the correction. The truth be told. Fathers, what am I talking about? That they manifest as love. 
guidance and protection for their wives. I'm talking about their responsibilities to wife now. I've not entered their responsibilities to children. They are there to young men. I believe you will not disappoint us when you get married. You cannot disappoint us. You have learned a lot. True of us. Young man in this church, you cannot get married or you are married and your wife ever call me and tell me, Pastor, talk to your son. It won't happen. Not what you are learning. Not after all these things you are hearing. From love class. How many of you are blessed by love class? Those of you that are not coming to love class, I beg you in the name of God. Love class is not only for single. If you are married, everyone, come to love class. It will help you. We are getting recommendations from online by posting the videos online. Invitations, please. This thing you taught these people, please come and teach us. Then you that are here. Fathers, protect your wives. Love them. Be a love and shield to the mothers. Proverbs 30 verse 18 to 19 says, There are three things that amaze me. Look at the scripture. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 30, 18 to 19. There are three things. That means there are three things that amaze me. Number one. No, four things that I don't understand. One. How an ego glides through the sky. Solomon said, I don't know that this thing amazes me. How ego glides in the sky. The way they saw it, it amazes me. Number two, the way of the serpent on the rock. How serpent climbs the high rock without falling. The way of sheep in the midst of the sea. And the way of a man with a witness. They I can't understand the kind of love and bond between man and woman. That science, that science, I can't understand it. The most wisest man said that these four things are the things that amaze me in this world. I can't just understand. Look at man and woman. The love they share. How come? I can't understand them completely. If your love life, people are not looking at you, you and your wife, and say, Child, these people, when we are expecting that this marriage would have ended. It has not ended yet. That is how people will be looking at you, expecting that we expected it to end. It will end in Jesus' name. They will keep on reading the scripture. They will say, The way of this man and his wife, it amazes me. It amazes me. Your marriage will have a testimony. Amen. Potential wives, when you enter your marriage, will have testimonies. Amen. Potential husbands, when you enter your marriage, will have testimonies. Amen. That's why we are teaching you so that you don't start in the wrong foundation. Start it in the right way. If you are not up to 18 years, you are 17, 16, 14, and 15. When I'm praying for a married man, when you are saying amen, put your mind for people who are mature, not for you. I hear me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's not for if you are 17, 15, 16, that was, you are not for relationship. If I hear it, you will be happy with what I will do to you. They are not for relationship. First Peter 3 verse 7. In the same way, your husband must give honor to your wives. Hey, these people are not honoring me. Hear me. This is the scripture. Wives also need honor. Don't worry, men. I will enter your path. We are your men. We are telling what women have to do to us. But now I'm telling you the truth. Love them. Honor them. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. Give honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being as together of the grace of life that your prayers not be hindered. Which means if your wife is not happy, prayer don't need them. If a man's wife is not happy, prayers are hindered. Now, Bible they talk about that your prayers be not hindered, not be made right now. As much as possible, try everything possible to always make, make sure your wife is happy with you. How does God manifest true fathers in the family? He directs the family in God's ways. A father's responsibility is to direct the family in God's ways. You can't stay in my house and tell me you won't come to church. You must come to church. Why won't you come to church? We are Christians now. You don't serve the God that I serve. I can't stay under my house, under my roof. You must command them in the way of the Lord. Joshua 24 verse 15 says, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Men, your responsibility in that family is to command you. you can't, your wife can't tell you. The, the place you are being blessed, and your wife can't tell you I won't come. That means you are not man enough. 
The place God is turning things around for you and your wife say, I'm not coming. I prefer not going to church at all at all. Let me just go to market on Sundays. It's not done. You have to assume the responsibility of a father in your house. Praise the Lord. What a father must never do to his children. Hey, don't provoke your children. A father must not provoke his children. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to rot, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You have to train them up. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from him. Don't provoke them through abuse, through provocative names, through causes, through unending comparison. You don't see that one. See a result. Look at your results. Don't do that. Don't do that. See as that one displayed in church. All you are, all you can do here is to eat, 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 eat. Don't do that. Don't provoke them. Look at how you are. Don't do that. Correct them. In love. It's better you use cane and flog them than you call them names that are demonic. Is anybody hearing me now? Because you will be provoking them into a character that they should not become. Yes, yeah, sometimes children, they can push you to the wall. They will make you want to call them the name of what they are behaving like. You know that this attitude they are acting is good that behaves like that, but don't, call, don't finalize it by calling it good. Say you are a sheep in Jesus. I know what you are, you are behaving like, but you are blessed. It's not easy. They will be telling you, you telling them, they will do, eh. I know, I know, I know, but you are not this thing. In the name of Jesus, you will change. Is anybody following me now? Don't call them. Your mouth is powerful. Anyone as a father, anyone in that office of a mother, office of a father, your mouth is powerful. Your mouth is what? Your mouth is what? Your mouth is what? Fathers, what you should not do to your children? Never stop to pity them. You must always pity your children. Psalm 103 verse 13 says, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. You must look at your children and always pity them. If you pity a child, you will not allow that child to starve. If you pity a child, you will not allow that child to go sick. If you pity a child, you will not allow that child to misbehave. Are you hearing me now? Yesterday night, I don't know who opened the, my parlor door that mosquito entered my house. You need to see me watching a Joanna. I said, this mosquito, you must not bite this girl. I push the mosquito. Push the mosquito. Until he, I could not kill the mosquito. If my wife sees mosquito, one hand, one hand, she have killed the mosquito. Now, two, two, tired, I cannot kill the mosquito. I don't know why. Whether it's short, short hand, I don't know. I push the mosquito, no way. Finally, never brought light and I increased the fan. So when fan is blowing, mosquito will lose balance. That's when I now slept. I was looking at her, calculating, I don't want to treat my malaria. Do you understand me now? I'm trying to have grown so big that she's, she does not sleep in a net now. She's a big girl now. When we sleep, she also takes her position and balance her own too. She does not sleep in net now. She, yeah, she's growing by, by leaps and bound. So I must want. What I'm using is to explain how I pitied her. So as a father, you must look at them and pity them. I know that these ones can't fend for themselves. This one can't pray for themselves. You have to pray for them. We pray for her every night. Whenever I carry Joanna now, if she's playing and I hold her and I'm praying, she will stop playing and she'll be looking at me. But till I finish praying. She understands prayer. Start it early now. It's not I can't see any child now that I've overgrown training. Start it now. This evening, when you get to see sit down. They have not no child have overgrown your training. Child, I can't see anybody here that have overgrown your training. Let them sit down. Watch me pray. As you pray, pray, pray before you know. When Gideon started staying with us, if you tell Gideon to laugh, to say, I say laugh. If you tell Gideon to sing, all of you will laugh throughout that evening devotion. But now Gideon can sing during devotion. He can pray. He can comfortably raise prayer point. When my wife had not taken the kingdom, we take prayer points. So they also take prayer points. Oh God, make my auntie have baby. Oh God, make my when we open her, be looking at her. But when he came in, he could not. When he was watching and learning, 
please, no child here has overgone training. Gather them after that night. Don't only gather your children when you are sharing food. They can fend for themselves. But there is one thing that nobody should teach them. is prayer. You teach them how to pray. Teach them how to pray. Pray together. If sometimes you are, you are so busy, Sometimes you are so busy. Whenever you are coming, be mindful of our camera. Whenever you are so busy, you can't pray. Monitor them that they are praying. Sometimes I pray with them as family. But when I know that I have lots of message, like on Sunday, I have morning message, evening message, Saturday, I have to go and prepare. I'll tell them to go and pray. I finish my own and pray in the midnight. See, never stop to provide for them. Amen that cannot provide for his house is worse than an infidel. Always provide for your children. Stop and entry now. Responsibilities of a worthy child, wife, and members to a God-sent spiritual father and biological father. Number one, pray for your father. Pray for your spiritual fathers. Pray for your biological father. He did not do this for me. How often did you go to God to ask God to give it to him? He did not provide this for me. When did you cry to God to do this for him? Yesterday, I the day before I was talking to my wife, I said, I need to take you out. Please tell God to give me money. Is it that I cannot pray? I can pray too, but I'm indirectly telling her that I need her prayers too. Children, kneel down and tell God, bless my father. Kneel down and tell God, I am fasting today for my mother. I am you are not too, no child here is too young to fast. I am fasting for my mother today. God, see how other children are in school. During break, they can buy what they want to eat. My mother can't give to me, my father can't give to me. God bless them. Your heart is so pure as a child. God will answer because of the pureness of your heart and have mercy on your parents and give them money. Pray for your father, your pastor. Every day, pastor is shouting out, Amen. Your own is Amen. Your own is Amen. I collect, I go. I collect, I go. When you reach house, do you ever kneel down and say, God, help my pastor? God, answer his prayers. God, expand the ministry. God, give him what is his heart desire. God, you know what he has been asking you. I came here this evening to support that prayer. Please, give to him what he desires. Pray for your spiritual fathers. Number two, your responsibilities to your spiritual and biological father, defend them. Any child that appears where they are talking about his father or her father and she keeps quiet, that is a poisonous child. You appear where they are talking bad about your biological father or about your pastor and you shut your mouth. Then you are even worse than the person saying that thing. Because you are telling them I support you by keeping quiet. Let me tell you something. Let it be that your father made the mistake, he did it, and you appear there and defend them. When you come with your father, you, you two of you speak it out. But you are outside, they are saying this. Defend them there. Like husband and wife now. As a husband now, I come out and say, this Bible now, this color, you people are seeing is white. This Bible, this place you people are seeing is white. You people agree? Yes, you won't agree. But my wife cannot follow you people are not agree. She must say with me that it is black, it is white. My wife must agree with me that it is white. She must defend me. By the time we now get home, my wife will now tell me, say, honey, sweetheart, that thing you said is black. Is as, that thing you said is white is actually black. Oh, but I can't say it outside. Because you are my Lord. You are head over me. You are husband to me. I can't fight with you in the public. He, her, her own is to correct me at home. Then my own is to tell myself the truth. That I've picked pick the truth. Now I go back and correct myself. Okay, I was just joking. It is. If I say this is black, all of you disagree. My wife must agree that it's black. We are one. 
she can't wash me her side. It's when we get to the house, she can correct me. You told me my wife did this, did that. Yeah, it's expecting me now to shout at my wife in front of you. You don't miss the road. You miss double road. I can't do that. I will say, oh, it's okay. But when I go home, I will not tell her, baby, don't do it again, please. You must defend your father outside. Be it biological father, be it spiritual father. You don't also just defend them. You defend them verbally. You defend them spiritually in the room of prayer. You defend them by supporting them. Look at Psalm chapter 1 verse 20, 127 verse 3. What I'm saying is biblical. Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is reward. God gives spiritual fathers children because it's an heritage. God has brought you people here. It's a heritage. Number Verse 4. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty, so are children of their youth. The way arrow is in the hand of the mighty, that is how members are in the hand of the pastor. That is how children are in the hands of the biological father and the spiritual father. What is arrow? Arrow is a battle too. So a pastor that has members has battle tools. Both in spiritual place, in prayer room, and in physical place. See the next verse. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. Happy is pastor man that has plenty of them. Happy is your father that has plenty of you as his children. Why? They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. They shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Your children are the ones that will respond to the enemies. It's not the fathers. The children will wait at the gate. Oh, you are coming to talk to my father anyhow. I stop you at the gate. They shall speak with the enemies at the gate. Any father that is there suffering me up or anything, when he has children, then that father don't truly have children. Have you seen your children? I say, you can insult me. You can do this to me, but if you ever try to insult my mother again, have you seen it in Soya? So if you insult my mother, I will show you that this woman gave birth to me. If you insult my father again, I will show you that I am also mad. That is a child defending their biological. You also do that for your spiritual parents. So do it for your spiritual parents. That was the time I was into some challenge. I saw how most of you ran it round. Say, Daddy, allow me to do this. I say, no, 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 don't do that. Calm down. Most of you stood your ground. Say, this must be done. I say, don't worry. I saw most of you rally around around me. You must defend your spiritual parents. Four or three. Honor your father. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. This one is the one that Despite how we want to preach it, some people will say, Till Jesus come, this part, Pastor, in fact, finish this part quick, I won't do this part. May that not be you. There is no father without honor. There is no father-child, father-daughter, father-son relationship without an honor. Many of you, many of you, may not be you that I'm talking about, but many of you will Decide that your last hundred naira you will give it to a member, then you give it to me. Many of you. Your last fifty naira, I will decide that I will ever give it to another person, and I give it to Pastor. You are not doing it intentionally, but you are doing it, blocking some blessings for yourself. I am not doing saying this now. This is the part of the strongest part of message any pastor can preach. They will say, no, no, no. It will look as if I'm begging. If I preach this part, what? I am not preaching to beg you. I am telling you the truth. I know most of you are praying, God give me. God will give you. Most of you have honored me in several ways. God will bless you. On my birthday, if I tell you the people that honored me in this church, you'll be surprised. Only gift. And uh, his younger brother that honored me on my birthday. If I am wrong, prove me wrong. If I am saying the lies, prove me wrong. On my birthday, gift and Ella that bought us cake. These three persons. Tell me what they used to honor me. Simple thing, you know. I was going to enter after my birthday in service. 
to Etaka. Gosui ran after me. I said, Daddy, for your birthday, I want to pay transport for you today. This is my birthday seat. He gave me 200 naira to enter Moto to the house that I should not drink. That is my birthday. I stood and looked at this young boy. Even conscious, pity them. You know, I thought about pity them. The pity I had for him made me and Gideon too, he honored me. Pardon me. The pity I had for them, for the young boy, said, I'll take 100 naira. Let me take 100 naira. He said, no, take. I said, no, take 100 naira. I use 100 naira. I purposefully pocketed my own money. I use my 100 naira and turn water to go home. I am not saying this to make anybody feel bad. But if I don't teach you the truth, God will be angry at me. Because I will be blocking your blessings not knowing. That small boy, 100 naira, that is all he had. But that was an honor recorded in heaven. Gift also honored me, two of them, and Gideon. Don't be that person say, if I have millions, that is when I will honor pastor. No. You think 50 naira will make you ashamed? Put it in envelope, drop it on the altar, and write pastor's seat. Because you understand honor. Because you understand honor, not because you just want to give. It's not in the giving. Because you know that a person that gives the prophet a cup of water shall do what? Shall receive the prophet's what? Reward. Exodus 20, 20 verse 12 says, Honor thy father. Please, uh, uh, this person, on, pardon me to your answer. That's why I, for, I forgot your name. <laughs> Diamond daughter. She honored me too. These are the only names that honored me. Any other name I didn't mention, you didn't honor me. Diamond. She's inside, that's why I forgot her name. He said, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long and the land which the Lord thy God give thee that thy days may be long. Honor. Honor is not good morning. Honor is not good night. This part of message can be painful. But you know who is a true matured Christian when they hear this kind of message and they are not angry. They tell themselves this is the truth and that is the truth. We have to change. Don't be angry when truth is told. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 says, A son honored his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, that is my honor. Put it on the screen. Malachi 1 verse 6. If I be a father, that is my honor. Many of you, you still have biological father. You have biological father. You don't tell me you are a student, you are a small child. Today is your father's, father's day celebration. If you can't give him anything, go and carry his shoe and clean. Daddy, I don't have money. I'm cleaning your shoe to honor you today. This is what I have to give. Children, are you hearing me now? That thy days may be wrong. Honor your mother. Honor your father. Honor them. With any small thing you have, honor them. They deserve honor. That thank you. God bless you means a lot. I was going to my train one day. I saw one old woman. One thing, if I have money with me, students are in that car that I am. I don't allow them to pay their transport. Or old women are in that car. Students and old women. I, they have a place in my heart. This road, I paid, paid school fees for so many of this room. This guest to here. They know me. When they pass, they say, hey, they're great. I paid school fees most of the um, transportation. But once they're in the same car with me, as I'm dropping, I pay for them. The driver don't take from them. That's the kind of love I have for students. And also for old women. In that car, I'll pay. This one is in my three pack as I just dropped. I was just moving on that sun. Moving on that sun. I just passed. There is one thing that will always pull me back. I went back and wrapped up that one. 500. I had 1,000 last card in my pocket. He said, man, take God. say I should give it to you. And I withdraw another money same day to go and print something. I went to print something for church. When we finished printing the thing, the balance was 500, I think, in my hand. A woman was preaching in front of that place. I said, man, God said, take. The two of them proclaimed the same blessing. He said, my son, you will not lack anything that my children ever lacked in this world. Another person's mother proclaimed that kind of blessing to another person's child. Know how 
to make somebody to bless you. Know how to do. See, eh? blessings are hanging everywhere. Know how to. It's like when you go outside, there is ripened orange here. If you don't plug it, it will fall and destroy. Know how to plug it by yourself. Know how to shake the tree and shake down the fruit for yourself. Know how to look at atmosphere and say, I take from this. Some churches you go, they are preaching. Somebody will stand and go and tap on the altar, drop seed. We do it here. But I know that we, on, we respect the tightness. Some person cannot come out from there but because of tight corner. We, when we go to a bigger place, we'll practice all that. But they understand that that season, the moment is charged, they go and tap into that blessing. Know when it is the right time. There is a time to sow some seed. There is a time that even when you give that seed, it does not work. It does not work. Today, all of you must sow seed to your father, the spiritual father. Today, when I will take offering, after church offering, all of you must come and give offering. Do you like it? I, I should do it by first today now. When you finish giving it, don't be surprised. I must still gather it and still give for church. That's one thing with fathers. See, if I give my money, go chop We know the chop As I did, can't and finish, somebody could just stand down and say, Pastor, see what is happening in my family. Before you know, I don't carry it. I, in this church, my wife and myself and Gideon, Gideon have gone to school in the morning without food. My wife slept breastfeeding without food. Me too, without food, because I gave money to somebody in this church. That is the role of a father. If you think I'm lying, carry it your heart, ask him. Come to school in the morning without food. My wife is breastfeeding. No food. Me too, no food. Not that I didn't have money that day. I had money, but I gave it to somebody that needed it in church. Sometimes I do it without my wife knowing. I just transfer. That's the role of a father. Leave this if I give him. If I give him, he go chop. I don't chop it. I know the chopper. I use it for God's work. I use it for what? Most of you sometimes you enter here, you will see something have changed. They have added this, they've removed this, they've repaired this with that offering being raised. It's your father, his own purse. I'm making you feel emotional in this part of the message. Please, I apologize, but I have to tell you the truth. You have to learn the place of honor. You have to learn the place of honor. Four, speak good of your father. Your father is a man. Your spiritual father is a man. He's passing through a lot. When fathers go out to work and come back, they insult, they insulted them at that place of work. They will never tell you when they come home. Don't rub another salt in their womb by giving them another insult. Our children hearing me now? Is anybody hearing me now? A father that goes out to work and comes back, if the ogre, madam, slap them, insult them, they may not tell you how it happened so that you will not carry matchet and go there because they need to get your school fees from there they need to get their colleagues insult them they fight them they will come home they will never tell you even though they tell you they can't tell you in details they pass through a lot just to make sure they stand their place as a father may they not come home and you do to them what outsiders are still doing to them somebody say god forbid fathers am i making sense here now may they not come home and still face what they faced outside. I balance my teaching. You know, I don't teach one place. I leave another place. I spoke for the women. I'm speaking for the men now. In love class, you, somebody threw a question and asked, what will my wife do that I will never forgive her? What will I do that my wife will never forgive her? My wife, her question boils down to she needs love. My question, my answer rather, her answer boils down to she needs love. My answer boils down to I need respect. Men, we don't need love. The kind of love we want is not that is not our love. Our love is reverence us as your Lord. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Reverence us as your head. We love respect. That is what man needs. Then women know this love us as if tomorrow no go come. Just be loving me like Lovenda. You know Lovenda. Or love me like Lovinus. That is woman who be loving them. Their medicine is love me. Love me again. Love again. Love, 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 love. Man, only respect me. If you want love from a, a woman, a man, respect that man. If you want respect from a woman, love that woman. Whatever thing that happens to this side of the equation must happen to the other side of the equation. You want it in mathematics now. Balancing the equation. 
Give them your ears. Give your fathers your ears. Both biological and spiritual father. Let your father see. I get angry when I correct somebody more than two times. More than three times. I tell you, do this. And he refused to do it. Tomorrow again, I tell you, do this. Next tomorrow, I do. everybody have what fills them up. Me, may I not tell you, do this. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I get it. Before you now, I'll stop talking to you. Understand your biological father. Understand your spiritual father. Give them your ears. One proof that you give them your ears is that you will take notes when they are talking to you. And when they are preaching. And I know that from next Sunday, all of us will have that. Somebody say amen to that. In the house, your father, you have grown up, your mother wants to go out. May they wake up sometimes and see that you have ironed their clothes without them asking you. Give them your strength and your ears. May they wake up and see that you have washed the dishes, swept everywhere. Nothing like I'm too small. You are not too small anything. Finally, encourage and support your fathers. When Moses' hands was heavy, Aaron brought chairs. They set chair for him to sit down. Aaron and Hall lifted his hands up and held his hand because if this hand go down, they will win us. Most of you are bringing your the father down. You are bringing the hand of the man down in that family. Let his hand fall. If that hand fall, the whole house are falling. It's not only the man's name they will call, they will also call your name. Am I making sense here? Hold his hands up. Pastor, don't they too do? I know they pray for him again. God forbid, if anything happens, they will look at you and say, is it not that your pastor? Pray for him. And it will never happen in Jesus' name. Pray for your fathers. Encourage your father. How many of you have received my SMS? You lift your hands up. We get SMS. I said to God, bless you. Since this just started, open, lift your hand up. Today now, I'm angry now. Lift your hand up. Everybody lift your hand up. Put your hand down. How many of you have ever replied that SMS? What did you reply to? Thank you, sir. You have replied. I'm being practical. Today, I said I will take offering for Father's Day. If you like, carry church offering and put in Father's offering. God will know. Let me tell you the truth. Sometimes, send your pastor a message. God bless you, sir. The work you are doing, God will use you to do more. Encourage them. Today is Father's Day. You know your father. You know who is your biological father. If your biological father is no longer alive, you know the one that is an adopted father. Send him, say, the role of a father you have played in my life. You must be alive to eat this fruit. That man, even though sickness is holding him, sickness will leave him. Say, ah, I have something to live for. I have hope in this child. I won't die now. So this child had me in his heart. I won't die now. This daughter had me in her heart. I won't die now. Pastor, this message is preached. Touch me. This message you preach. I scatter my head. I love being truthful. That's why I call names. My daughter is inside there, diamond. Church will close. Before I reach house, I'll just open WhatsApp status. She will know this youth language. Diamond will put one for my pastor. Finish this topic today. Diamond, she will post. Then, from one point that you give, if she's your friend on WhatsApp, you will know that I'm not lying. From each point that I gave from beginning to the end, you would think that she's inside there. Pressing computer, she will give exact all the same points on our WhatsApp status, one after the other. I'm not calling names to make any person's head big. I'm not calling names to best say, okay, they are talking about me. I'll be brand. No, 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 no. I'm telling you practical things. I'm a young man, so I love practicality. I'm telling practical things. Somebody on ne not necessarily speaking, you say you think the person is busy displaying. At the same time, he's writing everything. That after service, you will see on our substitutes either two or three slides explain the message from beginning to end. Do you think I won't be proud to preach more next Sunday? That's why I say, okay, this person here did this side. I'll go and research more. If this one entered at this place, I'll enter another side, enter another side. Tell your neighbor, be proud of your pastor. Many of you, it's only on my birthday that my picture appear on your status and on your wall. Let me close this place. I'm angry now. <laughs> it's only on my birthday that my picture 
enter on your page and I'm your pastor. It's only on my birthday that you remember. You don't even call me. You don't send me a message. It's to ask me, is there, mess, is there cake? Or is there rice? Learn to honor your pastor. You must, you must do what? I said learn to honor your pastor. Learn to honor. You don't have two pastors. You have one. You don't have two pastors. You can have many mentors. You have one pastor. You can have many fathers. You have one Abba Father. God. Learn to honor him. You will see his flyer. And you will see Sunday service. You will receive it. And it's not that you don't have data. You are posting your own face. You are posting your everything that concerns you. But to put that your church own on your wall. To put it or to share it. It will look as if if you share it, the whole of your community will shut down. Why are you doing this to your church? Why? Tell us. Let's apologize to you. It's not another person that will advertise you. It is you. Anything that will be said about PGC, it will start from you. Anything that will be said about your pastor, about his message, it starts from you. I used to tell someone, if you don't give them what to talk about, they will fabricate something and talk about you. So show them the light that is shining out of here. Show them the testimonies that are coming out of here. That I didn't call your name does not mean that you are not honoring me. You are honoring me in one way or the other. But I'm talking of practical ones. God will bless you. Most of you, your tithes, you don't joke with it. Offering, you don't joke with it. But go a bit further. Learn honor. Did anybody catch anything in this service? Did I make you angry? Did I make you angry? If I make you angry, come to my house with police. Go to court. But you can't go to court because I did not make you... Because you have to change. You have to do what? I know God brought you to be here. And you will be here forever. But in case you are a passerby, you are just without. And you will move out. Even though you move to another church, you must honor that pastor there. I'm not teaching you because of me. I'm teaching you what will make you attract blessing from that next pastor you might meet. It's not, I'm not being selfish about this. I'm not teaching because of me. I'm not teaching because I'm looking for what to eat, use and buy and buy food today. I'm telling you what will help you. A hand like this will never receive. It's when you drop, you receive. And you mind where you are dropping. If you drop on the wrong place, you won't get it back. Somebody is laboring for you every night and day, praying for you every night and day, and you do to this to another person. You keep doing it to another person. But that person laboring night and day, 50 naira cannot leave you to get to that person. How does God answer his prayers quick? And to those of you that is in your heart, you look at your pastor and say, Child, I need to buy my pastor car. I need to rent a large home. This is my pastor. This pastor here has blessed me. God really needs to bless me so that I can bless my pastor. May God make you a millionaire before this year is over. May God give it to you before this year is over in the name of Jesus. People that will walk up to church and say, Pastor, 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 next Sunday coming up, please, can we do feast in church? I am coming with coolers of food. May God make you that young lady. Make you that young one in the name of Jesus. Finally, Proverbs 23, verse 22, Hearken unto thy fathers that begat thee and despise not thy mother's law. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I think we can use the keyboard now. <laughs>